This video will help you learn how to find the discriminant and what it is used for. So if you would go ahead and copy down into your notes packet the following explanations. So to find the discriminant, you're going to use the formula b squared minus 4ac. Hopefully that looks familiar to you. So if you recall the quadratic formula, it is used to solve for x when you have a quadratic equation. So b squared minus 4ac, you should already have memorized since you need to know the quadratic formula, and b squared minus 4ac is the inside number that is inside the radical for the quadratic formula. So you're not going to have to memorize a new formula. It is just b squared minus 4ac, which is embedded in the quadratic formula. So that's all the discriminant is. What is the number in the quadratic formula that's inside the radical? Now that number tells us some stuff. So if the number in the radical, when you do b squared minus 4ac, if that number is positive and a perfect square, so remember what a perfect square is, like 49, in other words, if I square root 49, I was actually to do this part, it would equal a whole number. So the square root of 49 is 7. So if the discriminant is 49, what that tells us is that it's going to have two rational solutions. What rational, so, what rational means is it's something that can be written as a fraction. It's something, it means it's going to have two answers, like 5 and 6, or 2 thirds and 5. That's what that means. So if you go back in your notes, example 1, take a look at the work we did for example 1. So this is a problem we've already done. We used the quadratic formula, and take a look at this. We ended up getting two answers, 4 and 2, which are rational. They could be written as a fraction like 8 over 2 or 4 over 2. Those are fraction forms of 4 and 2. But we could have known before even solving this that we were going to have two of these answers like that because if we take b squared minus 4ac and we plug in 1 for a, negative 6 for b, and 8 for c, let's see what happens here. Oops, b is negative 6, right here, negative 6. We would have 36, and then negative 4 times 1 times 8 is negative 32. We would get 4. So the discriminant is 4. And what that means, since we can square root 4, do you see what happened here? Since there was a 4 in the inside, square root of 4 is 2. And then you could do 6 plus 2 and get 8. And you could do 6 minus 2 and get 4. And then you would end up getting two answers. So because the discriminant was 4, it tells us that there's going to be two answers and they're rational. We could also, if we get do the discriminant and we get a perfect square and a positive perfect square that also tells us that we could solve the equation instead by factoring if we look at this problem here right since the discriminant was 4 and we can square root 4 it's a perfect square what that tells us is that we could have taken x squared minus 6x plus 8 and instead of using the quadratic formula, since the discriminant is a perfect square, we could have instead factored. We could have solved this by factoring. So numbers that multiply to 8 and combine a negative 6. So negative 4 and negative 2. And then we could have set each of these equal to 0 and gotten x is 4 
and x is 2, which that's exactly what we got using the quadratic formula. So the point is, the discriminant, if it is a perfect square, in other words, a number that you can square root, it means you could have factored it. It was factorable. Okay, our other option is the number inside the radical, the discriminant, could be positive, but not a perfect square. So like 12. We cannot square root 12 and get a whole number. So when we get a number like that, that tells us that we're going to have two answers, but they're going to be irrational solutions. That means your final answer is going to have a radical in it. If we take a look at example 3 that we solved yesterday, the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is the number inside the radical. So if we look here, it's 44. So the discriminant is 44. So when you do b squared minus 4ac, you compute that, you get 44. Well, because we cannot square root 44, there is no number times itself that is 44. What that tells you is the final answer, which if you look at the answer we got, still has a radical in the final answer. Whereas this problem, the discriminant was 4, and we had two answers, that are rational. In other words, they didn't have radicals still left in its final answer. But since the discriminant here is 44 and it's not a perfect square, it tells us that we have two irrational solutions. Okay, so thirdly, we can get a number in the radical that is zero. So if the number in the radical is zero, it means it's gonna ha only have one solution. So if we take a look at this example here that I just made up, if we plug in our a, b, and c into the quadratic formula, you would get that the number inside the radical, the discriminant, is zero. So when the number inside the radical is zero, what happens is when you do negative two plus zero divided by two, that's gonna make negative one as a solution. Well, so negative 1 is a solution, but then when we do negative 2 minus 0, we get the same thing. We still get negative 1. So we only get one solution when the discriminant is 0. And lastly, we could get a negative in the radical. The discriminant could be negative. So if the discriminant is any negative number, what that tells you is your final answer is going to have i in it. You're going to have two complex solutions. So if we take a look at this example right here, number 6 that we solved, the discriminant here is negative 24. So since the discriminant is negative 24, when you square root it, you're going to have an i. So that tells you that the final answer, if you look here in our notes, has the i in, within the answer. Okay, so let's do some examples here. It says find the discriminant and use it to determine the number and type of solutions. So we write down to find the discriminant, we're going to do b squared minus 4ac. So a is 3, b is negative 5, and c is 6. So we're going to do negative 5 squared and then plug in a and c and negative 5 times negative 5 is 25 and then we'd have negative 4 times 3 times 6 that would be negative 72 and then we'd have 25 minus 72, which is negative 47. So the discriminant is negative 47. So if that number was inside a radical, that would mean that our final answer is going to have 2. And then the, if you were to simplify this, it would be i rad 47. So that means the final answer, if you were to solve it with the quadratic formula, would have i within the answer. So we're going to have two complex solutions.
solutions because the discriminant is negative. Okay, so let's take a look at this example here. First of all, we need to have it in standard form. We need to make it equal zero, the equation, to identify what the A, B, and C values are. So we're going to go ahead and subtract 6 to both sides. Then we'd have 7x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. So our A value will be 7, our B value is 1, and our C value is negative 6. So now we're going to plug in our values into the formula for the discriminant. And now we're going to evaluate. So 1 to the second power is 1. A negative times a negative is a positive. And then 4 times 7 times 6 is 168. And then 168 plus 1 is 169. So the discriminant is 169. And what that 169 tells us, since we could square root that number, and get 13, because 13 times 13 is 169, what that tells us is that the answer, it will not have a radical in it, because we were able to get rid of it, because the square root of 169 is 13. So what that's called is we're going to have two rational solutions. Okay, last one here. So we need to have it uh, in standard form. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and distribute here. So 4x squared plus 8x equals 7. And then I'm going to make it equal 0 by subtracting 7 on both sides. Okay, so now we have found a is 4, b is 8, and c is is negative 7. So now we're going to plug that into our discriminant formula, b squared minus 4ac, which again is the inside of the quadratic formula's radical. So we have 8 to the second power is 64. A negative times a negative is a positive. And 4 times 4 times 7 is 112, and that's 176. So the discriminant is 176, and if I square root that number, the square root of 176, there is no number, whole number, times itself that's 176. So what that means is the radical is never going to disappear. We need that radical. So what we call that is irrational. So our that means we're going to, if we were to actually solve this, you're going to have two irrational solutions. In other words, you could have never solved this by factoring.